For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach give us that order Prepare slaughter For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put this work in Hamashiach give us that order Am I more this way, this way? Like, how should I? It's a, the identity crisis most definitely is a real thing. I ran into that. Man, it's an identity crisis, bro. From the, from the from the way that we speak, right? I ain't even gonna say speak. The way that we communicate, um, the way that we resolve problems, um, the way that we interact with our spouse or with our potential partners, right? With our women, the way our women uh, interact with us, the way we operate within our kids. The amount of time that we spend to our kids, the type of principles and things. Hey, y'all got it, brother? Y'all get a flyer? Oh, I did have a flyer. Yeah, yeah, man, check that flyer out. You guys all on my Absolutely, man. Come check us out some more. Absolutely, man. Appreciate right. you. What's your name, bro? Ivan. Ivan, I'm Taz. All right, all right for sure. Even the time, the amount of time we're able to spend with our kids, bro. You see what I'm saying? Do you? Do you? Can you imagine that? Sometimes our, we have to go to work before our kids even get up to go to school. Then they have school for the majority of the day, and then we get home. And then they got to do their homework. They might have practice somewhere. Um, and then and, and we got to prepare for the night or prepare for the next day. I mean, how much time do we really spend with our kids? How much time do they really spend with mom and dad? We don't really get that. All of this stuff goes into culture. And we being here, being forcibly, that's why when he said, oh, we're all American, you're an American. You're American. Yeah, by force, by force, by force, but not you. You volunteered to come over here and assimilate into this life, whether it was directly him or his parents. But then he has an understanding of mindset to say, I'm, I'm thinking about leaving. Guess where he can, he can go back to Italy. Where the hell are we going to go? Africa? Africa is a continent. It is not a country. There is plenty of places over there. Our inception, our foundation, what it's going to cost for us to build this spiritual house. Yeah. We got to hey, understand that. I have a question about the spiritual house thing uh, in reference with the Solomon's Temple. Now, my question is, um, because it was King, uh, Solomon came after King David, right? Correct. So I was looking at King David and Solomon, how they was kind of telling the story of like the better the leader and how King David wasn't able to build God's temple because of way he led and he wanted Solomon to go ahead and handle that. But when I was looking at that, it kind of was in correlation to the Esau and Jacob. Now Esau is kind of like reckless and Jacob was more like the kind of more well put together. So I was seeing the reference with that. And I was wondering if there's a correlation with that or is there a tale? Is that like a metaphor or anything to you if you ever thought of contemplating those two? Esau, Jacob, and um, uh, King David and Solomon. Because with Solomon's temple, I also looked up soul means son, and then O is also means of, and so it means son of, uh, son of man. You said soul means son of? Soul means son, and then O can also be referenced as uh, of. Soul, S-O-L-O, and then man. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let's unpack all of that, right? Um, the, to answer your first question, no, I would not correlate it in reason being is because Jacob and Esau were actual men that have actual lives that, you know, uh, David and, and, and Solomon have nothing to do with Esau, right? Now, I understand you're saying in terms of, you know, just the concept of it and whether or not we could apply it. I'm saying, I don't see any connection as to what David was going through and how he relates to Solomon and their story, I wouldn't, I don't it's, readily it's, see it's, any it's connection. The, um, the overall principle is just how it's reckless or out of control. More Whoever said that Esau was reckless. Well, his ways were different from his brother. That's all that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two manner of people shall be separated. One was going to be stronger than the other. Um, it says that Esau was a man of the field and Jacob was a plain man. Um, we wouldn't necessarily say that that's reckless. You see what I'm saying? And then even when you broke down soul, um, you're breaking down English. It's, it's, it's almost like where Egyptians say, oh, Israel is Isis, Ra, and El. You could do a lot of stuff with this English language. Yeah. So even when they try to say, oh, Isis, Ra, and El, English. It's the etymology. The etymology of it. Right. I, I, Israel, I don't know about that. 
but I'm saying Solomon, um, Solomon is 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 the uh, English transliteration. The my, my reason why I reference that because when you break down Solomon, when it says King Solomon, you know Solomon's temple. You got when you break down Solomon, son of man, so the temple of man, the son within. No, the no, what, within what, but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying, if 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 Solomon, huh? One of the right. If Shalom, if Shalama is the Hebrew way of saying Solomon, then break that down to mean son of man. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. The English way, like I said, you could do so much with it. When they go, Isis, Ra, and El is Israel. See? Because y'all got that from Egypt. No, Israel is actually y Yasharala. So do the same thing with Yasharala. It has nothing to do with Egypt. Not at all. So when we're breaking down and we're trying to make sense of the English version or the English side of it, which came thousands of years after these men actually existed, that's the reason why we wouldn't draw any connection to that, right? This English language that came about in what, the 14th, 15th century? Yeah. To then compare the way you break down those words to something that happened 2,500 years before? We wouldn't do that. But we get where you're getting that from and how you're putting it together. Is, is, um, well, when you say Israel, Isis, Ra, El, I didn't know Is means uh, Isis. Or, no, I'm saying this is the argument that people would make. Yeah, because the, the English way that they translated Yasharala is Israel. So what people would do is in trying in, a, in an effort to try to discredit or try to say, oh, you, the whole concept of what you guys teach comes from Egypt because Israel is Isis Ra and El. And it's like, it's cute. But when you get into the etymology, the study of the word, Israel is not the name for it. It's Yasharala. So how can you then try to make the same correlation with Yasharala? Same thing with Solomon. The way you do it with Solomon, Saul, is, is son, uh, uh, man, man, son of man. Right, now do it with Shalomah. You see what I'm saying? Shalomah just means peace. See what I'm saying? Um, but with that, Did you have another question pertaining to that before yeah, I go back? Because you were talking uh, about the spirit. You were talking about the spiritual temple. Bring it out uh, uh, when you were brought up Israel. Why did um, uh, Jacob think it changed to Israel? I mean, that what that his name got changed? To yeah, his name was changed. Jacob, he wrestled with the uh, with the angel. His name was then changed to Israel. I mean, it was supposed to be you know uh, a representation of what he was going to produce and what he was going to be. His now relationship with the Most High. It now evolves into him being the prince of the power yeah. instead of just being the supplanter. What is up with uh, Jacob's uh, agency? They had a uh, Jacob's agency I was learning. About. Agency? Yeah. This is like some, some modern said, stuff? Uh, cha uh, God changed his name uh, Jacob to Israel because his, uh, his agency had prevailed. His, his agency was tested and prevailed. Agency of right. I mean, I understand. I understand. What do you know about the agency? Yeah, I, I've I've never, I've personally never, never heard that. But the breakdown, I mean, him prevailing, um, like I said, at the act itself of him prevailing over the angel when they wrestled, is what then evolves the relationship between Jacob and the Most High, and now there's that, for lack of a better word, connection established. To where he says, you know what, Jacob, I now regard, I now look at, I now observe and recognize you as the prince of power. The prince of, my prince, rather than just Jacob the supplanter. My relationship with you have now evolved, right? So right now you Eli, we start kicking and we cool. It's like, now you my dog. You know what I'm saying? Now you my partner. Now you my homie. Certain names or certain titles will then evolve as a relationship or a bond is then formed. Correct. And that's what we see happening with, with, with Jacob and the Most High and his name being changed. And then, yeah, I had a question about his agency that y'all know about. Yeah, I had never agency. heard that before. The agency, but the breakdown that you gave, him prevailing, and then that contributes to the name change and you know his responsibilities now, so on and so forth. I have no issues with that. You feel me? Um, what I have you holding? Get, Revel get Revelation 2 and uh, get Revelation 2. You can drop Peter's and then we're going to get the other one I have you order. 2, uh, read 10. Look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. We can't fear the things that we're going to suffer. This is going sitting down and counting the cost. What is it going to take to serve the Most High? What is it going to take for me to love my brother, right? 
fear none of the things that you're going to suffer. Go ahead. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Prison, right? So it says the devil shall cast some of us into prison. Prison is something that we have to consider when it comes to serving the Most High. Can I really do prison? Can I really get locked up? Am I comfortable? Am I willing to get locked up to serve the Most High? Right? But the Lord is telling us, don't fear being locked up. Because that's the only thing that could ultimately stop us, is us being afraid. Yeah. That's what can contribute to us being unwilling, right? Being The fear there is anything that's going to interrupt you fully serving the Most High, ten toes down, two feet in. Go ahead. Uh, that ye may be tried. That you're going to be tried, right? They're going to try you. Same way Christ was tried. Read. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. And ten days is just a representation of any amount of time that you could be locked up. You got to be willing to take that. To stand on business or to stand on the principles, to stand on the truth of God, which is keeping his law, judges, and commandments. And of course, having faith in his son who the world calls Christ. If you get locked up for something like that, hey, what was, the, what was another option? To not do it? Hell no. I got to serve the Most High God. I got to acknowledge who the world calls Christ. There is no other option, so if I get locked up for that, so be it. Read. Be thou faithful. Be thou faithful. Go ahead. Unto death. Even if it means that I got to die. Because we see plenty of examples of this happening in the scriptures. And dying for the Most High is the definition. Or dying for, for a greater cause. For something outside of yourself is a definition of being a martyr. Let's go back to that. Early, what You said, what's the definition of martyr? Giving your life. Being a sacrifice for something greater than yourself. Right? Uh, that's it on that or some more? And I will give thee a crown of life. And if we can make such a sacrifice, it's the Lord says at that point, will he give you a crown of life? Because we can't fear the person that can only destroy our body. That's what the devil can do. He can cast you into prison. He can, he can, you know, suffer death and bring death upon you. But it says what? Don't fear the person that can just kill the body. Fear the person that can kill the body and the, and the uh, spirit, right? And the soul. You don't ever want the Most High to take this understanding away from you. That's where your soul comes into play. You don't never want the most high to take this understanding away from you because when the Lord takes the understanding from us, <laughs> transatlantic slave trade, Jim Crow, antebellum, damn civil rights, goddamn, uh, 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 what's another, uh, Black Wall Street, Seneca Village, uh, uh, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice. All the cities that got burned down and flooded and turned into rivers. Everything. The Alabama church bombing. That's what happens when the Lord takes the spirit from us, takes the understanding from us. That's the type of stuff that we can fear. Not the person that could just sit up here and kill our, kill our flesh. This flesh is nothing. This flesh is going to go back to the earth. Our spirit is going to be regenerated again. But what do we leave behind when we go? See what I'm saying? And, and we always speak on this, man, how it's a shame that the legacy of, or a part of the legacy that somebody like George Floyd leaves behind is that his brother... Right. Meaning a fellow black man sat there and recorded this man being murdered rather than jumping in the help because jumping in the help. Guess what is a law of God. So when I gave that whole example of jumping on the grenade for your brother, that's being faithful unto God, even unto death, because I'm commanded to not stand by and watch my brother's life be in danger. I'm supposed to take action. That is a law of God. And imagine if we, as black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, as we come together, if we introduce a concept like that in our communities, how much better we will, better off we will be. Precept. Bring your precept. This is the book of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Uh-huh. Greater love have no man than Gre this. Greater love? There is no greater love of man than this. Go ahead. That a man lay down his life. That a man lays his life down for what? For his friend. For his friend. Go ahead. That was it on that? There's no greater thing, greater way to show love to your brother than to lay your life down for him. Bring it out. I'm gonna start with the first John chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say I love God. If a man says, I love God, go ahead. And hates his brother. But then hates his brother, doesn't want to lay his life down for his brother, will stand by as his brother's life is in danger. But you talk about you love God. Go ahead. He is a liar. He is a liar, read. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen. He that does not love his brother who I can see. I clearly can see you. How can I not show you love but then turn around and say I love God? Go ahead. 
how can he love God whom he has not seen? How, how, how can I love God who I've never seen if I can't even love my brother who I do see? Right. And the way that I love, and, and the greatest way that I can show my brother love is to lay down my life for him. And the faith that I have in the Most High, I'm willing to suffer death based off of whatever comes with it. That's the cost of it. I'm willing to pay it. I got the bread for it. Spiritually, of course, right? I can fund that endeavor if that's what it takes. Go ahead. And this commandment have we from him that, that he who loveth God love his brother also. And this is the commandment. If you call yourself loving God, man, you got to love your brother. We do not in, we do not enforce or emphasize that enough. We don't emphasize that enough. And that's why I'm saying, although I am justified after the three step process to go and say, hey, privately, two or three witnesses, the whole congregation. All right, man, it's still this dude don't want to don't want to listen. He don't want to understand. I'm writing him off. Yeah. But then on the flip side is I got to go above and beyond. I got to really show the most high how much I love him, because up to the point that where I didn't have understanding up to the point where this understanding was introduced to me, I hadn't been showing God love. I've been doing the complete opposite of what God has told me what love is. So now I got to go above and beyond. And this is where the concept of 70 times seven and some more comes into play. Right. All of this stuff is important. What else I have you holding? That was it. What else I have you holding in uh, Isaiah, 42. Isaiah 42 and 20? Because this was actually going to the point that the Italian uh, was talking about. I forgot his name. But where he says, yeah, this is the reason why I got out of the Marines. Cool. And what you've been doing since you got out of the Marine Corps? You walked up with tears in your eyes. Like like this stuff really strikes you emotionally, because I asked, I said, where does the emotion come from? If it strikes you emotionally and you've been out of the Marine Corps for almost 10 years, what have you been doing? You just got out just because you didn't like it. But then now you some high and mighty righteous dude and you want to come up talking about how you. He did, but we're not moved by those tears. The white tears don't move us. It's because it, because we've no honestly we've seen it way too many times. We've seen it way too many times. Guess what? For nothing to happen. I I'm glad that you are are tapped into your emotions enough where you can shed a tear. Thank you. But I need those tears to turn into something of of a result, of a benefit. Because this is what's something that's happening in the earth. Bring it out. Look at Isaiah chapter forty-two, verse twenty. Uh huh. Start at nineteen. Verse 19, who is blind but my servant? Who is blind but my servant, right? Um, go back to 43 and, what, 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 44 and 1. Uh, read 44 and 1 real quick. Hurry up and then go back. We got Isaiah chapter 44 from the top. Uh huh. Yet now here, O Jacob, my servant. The servant of God is Jacob. So who is blind but my servant, right? Finish it out. And Israel. Whom I have chosen. And the chosen is Israel, right? So we understand Jacob, Israel. His name was changed to Israel. Talking about the same person. Jacob, his descendants, his people. Who is blind but the children of Israel? Who is blind but God's servant, the children of Israel? The man's been out of the Marine for nine years. How has he contributed to recovering of sight to the blind? Done nothing. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Nor, it is, nor is, is it his responsibility either. I'm just pointing it out. That one, I'm not expecting you to do it. And I'm two, I'm recognizing that you have not done it. So don't come up to me with your tears like that makes a difference to me. Right. Go ahead. You guys, answer chapter 42, verse 19. Read. Who is blind but my servant? Go ahead. Or death as my message. What have you done to contribute it to recovering of, of our hearing? Read. That I sit. Who is blind as he? Who is blind as these people? What makes us blind? Because people like that will walk up to the average black and Hispanic man, and, and next thing you know, we're both over here in tears, just like, oh my God, man. If we could just have more people like this in the world, life would just be so amazing. Hey, 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 because like you're an American, you're an American, you're an American, you're an American. Like point out the issue and not come with a solution. I, Thank I, you. I Thank you. You I feel it. I just hear it. I see it. I know it. Like that. Education. How do we educate? <laughs> he essentially was, he says he says I think it's total bullshit that I had to go to business school just to learn how to pay taxes in this place. 
Right. So you're pointing out the problem. So what do we do? Oh, well, how do we educate? That is the number one line that white people give black people as to how to fix the problems in this place. But then he will tell us that the way in which they felt necessary to go over and to correct Afghanistan was to go and destroy it and re-implement a new system. That's what they do to other people, but why they could point out the issues here in America, which I feel like it far surpasses that of Afghanistan, but they don't want to operate and, and go about fixing it the same way. Because it takes a level of accountability, it takes a level of honesty and a, and a genuine a approach to it. They never want to end what they built. You want to know why? Because it's a total spit and a slap in the face to their forefathers. They would never. It's all they have anyway. It's yeah. all it's that they have. have. Yeah. And if you tore this system down and you started from ground zero, yeah. who would end up running it? Yes. <laughs> Black people would end up running this stuff. Hispanic people would end up running this place. Native Indians would be in here running this place. They have to keep this system that they've already created on our backs that doesn't make any sense to the people. He says, because the people going in and out of the Florida system, they, they don't even understand the system. It's not meant for them to understand it. It's meant for them to stay in the most ignorant place possible so that they could keep falling into the traps. We're about to read it. <laughs> keep reading. Who's, who's blind like my servant? Who's deaf like my servant? Go ahead. Who is blind as he that is perfect? Who is blind as he that is perfect? Why? Because people don't even understand the children of Israel, the black, Hispanic, and native, and man is perfect. We were created perfect. Not, hold on, hold on. Not in a position or in a place that we are without fault, but we are the people that have a complete, total knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the world. We just reject it, and that's why we're destroyed. Who's blind but him that is perfect? Perfect with who? Perfect with the Most High God. Read. And blind as the Lord's servant. And blind as the Lord's servant. Who is like that? Go ahead. Nobody. Seeing many things. Seeing many things. We've. This is why I said. The Lord, literally showing the children of Israel His power and His might by leading them out of out of the land of Egypt. I mean, come on, bro. It, it does it really? Do we really even need more than that? He literally gathered all of us in a mass exodus delivered us out of the children I mean out of the land of Egypt a place that the day before we were just in captivity crying and sighing to the Lord because of the rigorous conditions we were under you cannot you, can, you can hell no I, I, I'm just referencing how the whole movement now everybody's free and we don't have to deal with the whole racial slurs right in your face you guys should talk to the white man that's what I'm saying it's a whole different world I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this though Hell no. And I'm and I'm explain why. Because again, once you develop that eye, that lens that you can look through and see the BS, we're no better off now than we were back then. What's more dangerous? Your enemy that who that the enemy that you know of or the enemy that you don't know of? The one that you don't know of. So in today's times, we don't even see these people as enemies no more. We can cry with them and everything is cool. We can shake hands, we can dap it up, and everybody thinks everything is cool. That's a dangerous man right there. Very dangerous. And, and not only are we lowering our defenses and allowing them into our personal space and trying our best to get into their personal space, we're also then forming families with them. We're trying to build with them. Again, I don't all, think we're done, but if you just, the whole reference to leaving them out of Egypt, Right. All I'm talking about is the miracle. It's, it's a miracle. I wouldn't say it is because, like I said, MLK didn't even believe in the movement that he was pushing. Uh, he did later on. He, he kind of like before, before he died. He found out some information. Before he died, he says, I fear that I've integrated my people into a burning house. Because he understood and knew. Have you heard about the video where he found that? government had gave a check to some uh, country I forgot and he was going to go ahead and try to get that because he was able to expose them uh, for not you know giving the people their land and shit. So that's why he gave that speech but it's like it's a video out there it's not really well surfaced but if you ever checked it out or something it's out there where he's like we're going to go get this check you just type that in I feel it I feel it what I'm saying is that so when, when we when you brought up where he, he felt like he led 
them into that. I think that was a later thing after he found out about this. Nah, most definitely. Thing that most definitely. Really don't see that because they usually just see that video and then they're just like he didn't even believe in the whole thing. That was that was later on after they found out something. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather life be like it was back then when we was on plantations or would you rather have it right now? Uh, oh yeah, you going before the civil rights? Yeah, before civil rights. Okay, we'll say We're talking about b before emancipation. Would you rather be a man with this? Yeah. I mean, shit, I don't want to be chained up, man. You know what I'm saying? So you'd rather be like it now? Nah, I, yeah. I'm gonna tell you this, man. It's a, I, I, I'm gonna tell you this. You don't even gotta go further. It's yeah. a trick question. Okay. The reason why? Because the answer should be, I don't want to be in either one of them. It's and still fucked up, yeah. You and, 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 and and that's that's the point that I was trying to prove. When people try to make the comparison between now, uh, because from back then and now, it's like, why is that even a relevant question or even a thought? Because both situations are messed up in their own right. Yeah. And we don't deserve either of them. So even trying to make the comparison, it's like, no. The Lord brought the children of Israel completely away from oppression. They were completely on their own to do for themselves. That's why I would never compare what God did for the children of Israel to what MLK and Malcolm X and all of them. Yeah, they got us up and moving and doing something, but it was completely in the wrong direction. And the man was forcing Christianity on us with that white Jesus. But so saying all that to say, the things that the people who are blind and deaf and perfect and the servant of the Lord, it says the things that they've seen, they've seen things. They witnessed the Most High uh, 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 deliver them out of Egypt, which was a miracle. He, he witnessed or we witnessed the Most High giving us food every single day. Everything that we needed being in the wilderness. The wilderness is in reference to a land that's uncultivated. There's no trees there. There's no vegetation. There's no fruitful life in a, in a wilderness, right? That's how it gets the terminology. It's a desolate place. Yet the Lord had us wandering through this wilderness for 40 years and he provided everything that we needed. It said our clothes never got old and we never went hungry or thirsty. He made sure. We witnessed these things and still got nerve to turn on the Lord. That's why we're blind. That's why we're deaf and dumb. Right? Keep reading. Go ahead. Isaiah 42 and 20. Seeing many things. Seeing many things. Go ahead. But thou observest not. But it's almost like we don't even observe this stuff. We don't give it no credit. Read. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord opens your ears, but it says you still don't even hear. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. The Lord is pleased for his righteous sake. Read. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. It says he will magnify that law and make it honorable. That's the place and time that we're in now. We have to make the laws of God honorable so that our people follow them. And then we get the results of following the law, which is the blessings from the Most High God. Read. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. But this people, they're people robbed and spoiled. Read. They are all of them snared in holes. They are all snared in holes. And that we're snared in those holes because guess what? We don't even realize that we got enemies. We believe our enemies are the Afghanistan, Afghanistanian. We believe our enemies are the people of Israel, the people of Palestine. We, we believe all of our enemies is people in foreign lands and foreign countries. No, our enemies are the very people that run the country that we live in that keep trying to superimpose and force this idea that we're American on us. Like, like it, it's, it's kind of weird the amount of times that they always want to remind us how we're Americans. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. starting to get kind of weird. Yeah. Why do they keep letting us know, like, I don't know where the hell I am? I forgot. Oh, clearly. More than likely. But like I said, it's starting to get real weird when you think about it, the amount of times and the amount of effort that's put into reminding us and reinforcing the idea that we're Americans. It's like, why do you have to keep telling me that? Why do you keep having to try to reinforce the, the, the Constitution on me? Oh, I, the man said he, he will jump on a bomb for the First Amendment. Bro, who the hell is trying to come and take our First Amendment away? What, what, what the hell is it that America says or that your American citizens are saying that is so detrimental to other nations? Nothing. These other nations laugh at Americans. When they, oh, real quick, two seconds. When they voted Donald Trump in the office, foreigners were laughing. Like, this is a joke. 
They don't care about what we're saying. Nobody who's trying to come over here and take away your freedom of speech. You know whose speech they're trying to take away? The understanding of the black, Hispanic, and Native Indians or Israelites. And, and, and who's doing that? Foreign nations ain't doing that. The, the American public is doing that. The American government is doing that. So he's going to tell us that he's jumping on a grenade for our freedom of speech. Did you jump, jump on a grenade so Kyrie Irving could go and post a damn picture uh, that he wanted to post? Did you go jump on a grenade so Kanye West can go and say what he wanted to say? For Kodak Black to say what he wanted to say? For Ice Cube to say what he wanted to say? For Amari Stoudemire to say what he wanted to say? No. All of those people that made mention of this stuff, they then what? They get prosecuted. They get ridiculed. They get smeared and shamed by the American people. And like, yeah, you know that, so it's kind of crazy to kind of know what people add on that shit when they kind of like bring that. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I said, bring a, uh, bring your, uh, your point out that you had. Oh, no, I was going to say, bro, how you talk about they fighting for our freedom? How do our freedoms get way over there? Oh, shit. That's such a great point. That's such a great point. How did our freedoms get over there? I, I gotta go over there to fight for freedoms here. That's a good one. And that's my point. The man's been out, out of the service for nine years and he's not done anything to actually serve the people. I uh, uh, ran into a burning car the other day. Oh, it took you nine years to then do something heroic or valiant. Don't Come on, he, man. Don't even know who he saved, though. Don't he even know. Even the person who he saved. Thank you. Like I said, like I, I was saying some stuff the other. I was saying some stuff last night, um, having a conversation with someone. They talking about they want to go get a fur coat, and how Peter was going, you know, like oh Peter gonna have to just be mad because I want this fur coat. I said I wish Peter would walk up on me, and try to ridicule and say something about me with this fur coat. And I'm just gonna ask him, when have you put this much energy and this much attention into serving and fighting against the plight and the and the mistreatment and oppression of Black Hispanic and Native Indians? And they're gonna look at me like, oh, what, what, what? Sh okay, shut up. So until you do that, I ain't taking this damn, I'm protesting your protest. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna wear this stuff until you put forth your resources and energy into fixing the issues in my community. Yeah. You weren't about the goddamn animal community. Get the hell out of here. You fighting, th that's a serpent biting its own tail, man. Keep reading. They are all of them snared in holes. Snared in holes, read. And they are hid in prison houses. And we are snailed in holes. We don't even know who our enemies are, so they can all obviously set up traps for us. We think we're free, we think we're liberated, we think we got opportunity, and they just keep snares in the holes. That's why I said it takes you uh, uh, to go to business school to learn how to, play, to pay taxes. Meaning what? If you get some money in this place, you don't know how to pay no taxes, what they do? Huh? No. If you don't pay your taxes, what you gonna do? Where you gonna end up? In prison house. Then when, then when you start making a little bit of money and you start realizing how much taxes they, somebody said this other day, they said, they said, you're going to tax my paycheck. Then I'm going to take the money that the rest of the money I get from my paycheck. I'm going to buy something. You're going to tax me on that. And then if I don't pay taxes on the thing that I bought with the cash that I earned that you already taxed me on, then you're going to take what I bought. You're going to tax me on my paycheck. I want to buy a house. You're going to tax me on that. And then if I don't pay further taxes on it, you're going to take it away. Oh my God. Or I'm going to end up in jail somewhere. Snared in holes, hid in prison houses. Like I said, if it means for us to end up in these prison houses uh, by way of serving the Lord, we'll do it. So what? Go ahead. But this is our plight. This is what we're going through. And it's talking about how we're robbed, we're spoiled, snared in holes, and hid in prison houses. Go ahead. They are for a prey. We are for a prey. Go ahead. And none delivers. And none delivers, read. For a spoil. A spoil is what happens that you, it's, it's what's left over when you go and you take over a land. So when that, this Marine said he went over to Afghanistan, when they took over Afghanistan, everything that was left behind is the spoils of it. The land, the resources, the metals, the whatever it is that they had, even people are the spoils, right? We are for prey and none delivereth. We are, we are for a spoil and what? And none saith restore. And nobody says to restore. And that was the whole point where I said, oh, you want to point out how we're American? It's like, first of all, it's not by choice. And how in the hell has your act of valor or your uh, 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 moral uh, uh, decision to get away from a corrupt system and you want me to then learn about it, you want to educate me on it so that I know how to maneuver in it instead of doing what? Destroying this place and bringing me back to the place that I was in before I got off those boats. Which is what? Understanding that, I, that if 
we are of black, Hispanic, and native Indian descent, that we are the Israelites that you read about in this Bible. That's how we're restored. That's how we're redeemed. And that's how we are brought back into the good graces and mercy of the Most High God. There is no other way. There is no other way, right? You got any more questions? A uh, question about uh, Ishmael. Mm -hmm. What's up with uh, what's up with that? The Ishmael, uh, the Ishmaelites. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Because he had he had tribes. That's why I asked. I'm about to let, let's 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 read about what happened with Ishmael. Isaiah. I mean uh, Psalms 83. Psalms 83 from the top, man. Hurry up, this dude. You're taking Psalms. too long. I'm missing. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83 from the top. Yeah. Keep not thou silence, O God. Read. Hold not thy peace. Go ahead. And be not still, Read. O God. Read on. For lo, thine enemies. Thine what? Thine, thine enemies. enemies. So we understand who we're dealing with here. Our enemies, right? Do what? Make a tumult. A tumult is like an uprise, right? It's an issue. It's an issue that's stirring up, right? And so, they, so, so our enemies and the people that hate us, they make a tumult, right? They got an issue with us, read. And they that hate thee. And they that hate thee, go ahead. Have lifted up their head. Lifted up their head, they become proud, right? They're snooty now. They, they look down on you, right? They think they're above, go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Their whole objective and their whole idea is to cut us off from being a nation, read. Oh, it's like, uh, I don't know, skip the verse. I know, look at you. But verse. Three. No, no, hold on, hold on. What's up? I said I had a sense that it was more kind of more in the European kind of how they go about this and kind of just separate. Yeah, because they're in cahoots with them, right? They're in bed with them. So when we when when we look at them and we observe who they are and how they play a part in all of this, this is where we go right here, right? I know they ain't even here at all. That's why. I, that's yeah, because we ain't got nothing to do. Th this what we have had nothing to do with Ishmael. Okay. This is for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead. Verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel. They've taken crafty counsel. Go ahead. Against thy people. Against us. They got an issue. Now they're taking crafty counsel against us, right? Not for us. They're doing it against us. That's why we can look at this dude and we can read his whole objective because only thing I'm looking for, what are you doing for me? For me as in my, for my people, not as an American. This is how they've been confusing us. They convince us that we are American and then do things for Americans, but then when we look at the fine print, it doesn't benefit all Americans, only benefits some. Right. Go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They've, consult, they've uh, con, uh, conspired against us and they've consulted against our hidden ones. Our hidden ones is dealing with the ones that we protect. That's our women and our children. That's how they've been able to affect us. They put our kids in school and they feed this BS into our women's minds that cause conflict in between us, right? That, 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 they're the pri that, that our women are the prize and we should bow down and serve them. No, go ahead. <sighs> They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. And with all of their conspiracy and with all of their consultation, their objective is to cut us off from being a nation. And that's literally what they do. Now you have this whole movement with our women. It's called divesting the black man. They're saying, stop waiting around for this right black man to come around. Go and date other races. Which means that they're now going to be like Dina. <laughs> our women are going to go and build up another nation. Wild stuff, man. Wow. They've consulted against our, our people and conspired against our conspired against our people and consulted against the hidden ones for the purpose of cutting us off as a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel that the name of Israel read may be no more in remembrance. They literally have taken that from us. Most of the people in the sign have no understanding, no remembrance, no concept, no idea that they are of the children of Israel. And that's what they that's what ultimately what the objective was. And they fulfilled it. That's why it's so important for us to bring that back through the spirit and power of who the world calls Christ, real name Yahweh Shai, right? Um, keep reading. For they have consulted together with one consent. They came together with one consent, read. They are confederate against thee. They are against these people. So when you want to talk about Ishmael, the Ishmaelites are the Arabs that you, that you uh, see today, right? And they'll tell you that too. Next time you see an Arab say, ah, Ishmael. And he's going to say, yes, brother, Ishmael. I am Ishmael. They will literally tell you that. They will literally tell you that, right? It's not even a secret. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. So then it starts to list the people. The tabernacles of Edom are a part of what? These enemies, the people that hate us, the people that have conspired and consulted against us, the people whose one consent is what? To take the name of Israel away from us. The children of Edom. You know who the Edomites are? They get this man in hand. Get this man in hand, right? The yeah, yeah. white man, the <laughs> marine, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Italian marine, right? Pelman, go ahead. 
and the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites. So the Ishmaelites in the Bible is reckoned as the enemies of God and the people that hate God's people that have conspired together with the chief, most principal, and most hated person on the entire planet Earth, the Esau and his descendants, the children of Edom, to take the name of Israel away from us. And they've literally done that because there's something called the Trans-Sahara slave trade where the Arabs took us into slavery as well. And guess what? They introduced Islam to us. That's why a lot of us are in, off into uh, uh, Islam and claiming to be Muslims. It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff that they've conspired together with to take us down. Even right now, when you go over to you know the East Coast, go up, go up to New York. It's a lot of these you know Arabs trying to pose as damn Puerto Ricans, man. No BS. No BS. Got the bodegas trying to pose as Puerto Ricans. You know what I mean? Talking to stuff, and when you ask them, it's like, yo, we from? Oh, I'm Yem I'm Yemenese. You know what I'm saying? These dudes is from Yemen, and 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 they walk around flooding flooding black and Hispanic uh, neighborhoods with bodegas and damn liquor stores. Doing what? Selling us poison, bro. Selling us poison. Just to do what? Just to take their resources after what they've made off of us in our communities and take it back to their people. They don't do nothing for us. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Of Moab and the Hagarines. Of Moab and the Hagarines is going to start to list a bunch of people. But you asked about Ishmael. Ishmael and how it plays out with all of this is the enemy of God. Uh, Most definitely. You got any other questions? Uh, we out here for you, bro. So yeah, whatever you got. Yeah, yeah. Uh, since you referenced the whole the woman worship thing, you more of a matriarch or patriarch? How oh, patriarch for sure. You got to understand, I mean, bro, I call myself an Israelite because of a man, not because of a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but again, like, there is this false understanding that if I stand on patriarchy, that I'm somehow now the enemy to my woman. No, I'm the patriarchy because I'm the one that can fight. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 I ain't gonna lie. I, I get down to the brass tacks of it. I'm the patriarchy because it takes violence to preserve this here. How was this nation taken from us? How was our identity taken? It says they consulted together with one consent to take the name of Israel from our remembrance. How did they do that? Did they talk to us? Did they hook us up to a machine? And they, Caucasian overload, Caucasian American overload, American overload? No, they beat us. Your name is not Kuta Kente, it's Toby. I even think I'm crazy for like thinking that way, but it's like my soul has a sense it's like, because these people, the these like, people, you got to understand, these people are not ready to rule the world. Correct. Have you ever read the Willie Lynch letter? Mm -hmm. Within the Willie Lynch letter, it, it presents a concept, right? I'm not, I don't, for, for, for anybody that's going to be tuned in and say, oh, it's not even real. I don't care about its legitimacy. I'm talking about how relevant it is. It introduces a concept. It's called buck breaking, where you take the most strongest, most powerful slave and you completely destroy him and take him all the way to the brink of death in front of his entire people so that he can be an example of what you don't want to receive. This is why it's important when the Lord says, don't fear the things that you're going to suffer. Be faithful unto death. Yeah. Like who? Like a man by the name of Nat Turner. You know about Nat Turner? You got to go read up on Nat Turner. Matter of fact, you can start off by watching the movie Birth of a Nation. Look, right? They talk about Look that up the 2016 time. version. Otherwise, you're going to find the... Uh... Yeah, the, the, you're going to see it. The, the, the original one was a bunch of white people. It was in black and white. Okay. The, the one in 2016, right? By uh, Nate Parker. Yeah, okay. Right? The guy from... Uh, he played in Glory. Uh, he was also in The Great Debaters. Right? This is why it's important. It says that we have to be faithful unto death. Right? So... When we see, um, they introduced the concept of buck breaking. So when they buck the, uh, break the buck, everybody was supposed to look and realize like, damn, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to face that type of treatment. So I'm going to be a, a, a lot more reserved. I'm not going to stand up for myself, right? Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to show any type of resistance. Yeah. So with that, what was going to happen is it's removing the power. It's removing the respect of the man in the home right because the man now in the home he's not gonna step up the way that he usually would have because he's gonna get the treatment that just happened to the buck so with that it, it, it what they said is it develops um a psychological 
No, but no, no. The, the concept. Break, break, okay, yeah, the concept, the concept is breaking the buck. Yeah. So when they do it to the biggest, strongest person in the village or amongst the people, then everybody else would then take on the mentality of fear. I don't want to go through that. So therefore, I'm going right. to be a little bit more reserved. Right. I'm not going to show any type of resistance. Now, the woman cannot even respect her man properly the way that she should because she can't look at him as if he's going to protect her because he's now put in a docile place and this is where the concept of you know matriarchy comes into place because now the woman uh, uh, usurps the position of being the ruler and being the authority because it's based off of her level of respect for the man that goes into him running the, running the, the show but where does her respect for the man come in is his ability to go out and to protect. Listen, his ability to go out there and get violent, to dominate. If, if your woman don't look at you like you ready to go out there and get violent, she ain't gonna respect you. And now that relationship is really done because she gonna go out be, being able to do what the hell she wants to do. But guess what? You say it's called power of authority, but watch this. Now that she takes on this psychological understanding and perspective to not respect you and she feels like she got to step up and fulfill that role she starts to raise the kids the same way you, you, you think that's like that's like a, a legitimate thing with the whole matriarchy you think that like fills in a little bit what matriarchy well the I'm, whole man and uh, female dynamic i'm about to explain it to you because within matriarchy she's going to raise her daughter to be what to be submissive or to be dominant I mean, think about it. To preserve the matriarchy, she's got to raise her child to go up and to further and to perpetuate the idea that women run stuff. That's patri patriarchy is that the woman is the leader and not the man. We're kind of thinking of like how the woman might be, you know, maybe the woman might want a warrior or something. That's, that's what I was going to be. You said want to be a warrior? Yeah, that but, but I no, the type of woman, but you're right how they're gonna continue to All I'm that. doing is I'm starting from the very top of the, the matter. Yeah. Or, or or let's say the base of it. Okay. The base of it all and what makes men um over women is that I'm more powerful than a woman. Yeah. Physically. They can say it all. I don't even this this whole idea they say, oh women are smarter than men or women mature faster than men. No, Dude, no. no. Yeah. Dude, no, Thank you. no, I, I, no. I thought it was only one. That's women, true. no, women are prepped to take care of, you know, certain life necessities that men are just not introduced to. Let's 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 take a let's take a blast to the past, right? Do you think that? Uh, it's hard to say. I was going to say, do you think a man knew how to uh, knew how to cook? But it's like, yeah, I mean, the Levites cooked. Right. But 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 your average man in a home, was he would it be a foreign thing for him to not know how to cook? No. Why? Because he probably would have never had to cook a day in his life unless he went out on a voyage on his own and had to develop that skill. Where would he even have the necessity to cook? You're, I'm talking about you. We had millions of, of people in our nation. We're talking about the average man. He grew up with a mother that took care of the household. She cooked, she cleaned, she did laundry, she sold and made clothes and did all of that. And he stayed there until what? Until he found a woman to do what his mom did. So where the hell would this man ever need to go and learn how to cook? Where would this man ever need to learn how to go and sew? Where would this man ever need to know how to go and do any of this stuff? See what I'm saying? So, okay, I, yeah. it's, I, I it's, it's, it's based life. off of how, it's based off of then how you're raised. Yeah. He's now raised to do what? You go out, you sow the field. You go out and plow the field. You go out and reap the harvest. You go out, chop the trees. You go out and repair whatever. You go out and herd the flock. That's what a man is going out and, and raised to do. He's raised to go out and to learn how to work the sword. He goes out and learn how to work the bow and arrow. He goes and learns how to defend his castle that he built, yeah. that he built his household. Yeah. 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 
That's what makes him the authority. Okay. I, hey, it, it's a real deep issue with that one topic. That's why I asked how would you, you know. Now watch it. this, because I made a statement and I want to, I want to, I want to land my plane right. I want to bring it full circle. I said matriarchy is complacency, because again, as a result of our women throughout time, right, especially us being in captivity here, being in slavery and oppressed, our women has developed this understanding to raise their women to be able to survive without a man to be able to protect themselves and not have to rely on a man's protection because now the man is docile but then she's going to raise her her son that's how she's going to raise her daughter to be able to sustain that independent woman but then she's going to raise her son to not put himself in position to end up like the buck so she's going to raise him to be docile she's going to raise him to be complacent she's going to raise him to always take low Matriarchy is complacency because without it, or, or excuse me, because with it, if she then taught her, her son how to be a warrior and how to be dominant, then he's going to be raised that way and he's going to have that dominant presence over the woman that he's going to get. We don't understand how these things, you know, uh, how, we don't understand how you have one without the other. But again, it's more of a Western societal concept, not matriarchy but the type of matriarchy that they're pushing yeah. where a woman is equal and just because I look over and see that it's a woman, I should be able to just take and tolerate a whole bunch of abuse. Yeah. But, if, but if you raise your voice at this woman, it's abuse and, and you should stop. But when she does it, it should be okay. Why? Because you're a man and you can tolerate it. Thank you. If I could tolerate something that you can't, I'm stronger than you. And, and, and I always say this, and I want the camera to... Don't put your hands on no man. That's why I Listen, I, I, I want to I say this on camera to all of the men out there. If your woman can whoop you, then she deserves to rule over you. Facts. If your woman can, can square up with you and whoop you, she deserves to rule over you. Simple. Because at that, at, at that moment, you can't even fill your job. She, she'll do a better job at yours than you can. Let's see what the comments on that look like. Oh, I, 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 are we going to see the comments? And I, I said that on purpose. What are the comments to come? You see what I'm saying? You're a man. You carry the seed. The only way that it, the only way that the only way that earth could exist, inhabitants could exist, is from a man's seed. Now that's fact. That is fact. And usually I, I, I try to push that, but not try to diminish the woman because it's not it's not that you necessarily the woman. The woman's just a it's a principle. It's just a certain principle that they stand for. It's the more the receptive, we're more the input. It's the input, you know, it's the... Exactly. It's how the mind works. You put in a thought into the empty space of the void or whatever. So Get that, um, what is that, Ciroc, uh, 26... No, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. And everything you're saying, I'm about to get a scripture for it. Um, it says there's nothing, nothing better than a mind well instructed. For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with faces. Iniquities of they father, bloodthirstiest of our nation. Not for living water, waiting to put that work in. Hamashiach gives that order, prepare slaughter. For all his sons and his daughters, won't fill the cities with faces. Iniquities of they father, bloodthirstiest of our nation. Not for living water, waiting to put this work in. Hamashiach gives that order.